What the? Stop this conversation. Stop this conversation. So the deal with this parking switch, you're gonna come out, the truck is dead. You got nothing. What happens is when your truck, it doesn't think it's in park, your dash lights stay on 24 seven to the point where it's draining the battery. So you can jump the truck, you can, you know, you can jump it, you can charge the battery and it's gonna get you going. But the problem is it's not going to permanently fix you. My first initial thought was I'll just get a new battery. It's winter time. I'm sure my battery is just junk. I'm in Iowa. I get a new battery, truck's fine. Next morning, I was just, my gut feeling was like, something tells me the truck's not fixed and it's gonna die, or it's not gonna start. And it did not start. Truck was dead, again, completely. So that's when I was like, okay, knocked out the battery. I know it's not the battery. You're, you might even actually think it's your alternator or something like that. So once I figured out it was not the battery, I had to start looking on the internet. Upon investigating, I'd read something about the parking switch, and basically what happens is, when it's not in park, your lights are on 24 seven, therefore gonna drain your battery. Now what, what I have noticed, so my switches went bad twice. I bought, a, the first switch I bought off eBay, they say it's just the regular switch, like the factory doorman or whatever, it's the same OEM, whatever. Cheap though, I don't even know if it's 25 bucks, now I haven't looked, but it's still on there. It's a little cheap kit. Or you can go to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, they carry it. My last one I purchased from AutoZone and it was like 60 bucks. I was just like, fuck it, I need it. I, I, I don't wanna wait another two to three days because what happens, you're gonna have to start pulling a fuse and because you wanna pull the dash fuse basically. And by doing that, that cuts off the power, then next morning your truck's gonna start. The easiest way though to tell you guys if you are having this issue or it's, it's tough to pay attention to this because even I now, I've had this switch go bad two times and I just never still, I still don't really pay attention to it. I just, I guess if it happens morning of, I pretty much know exactly what to look for. If you guys are ever worried this is the issue going on with your truck and you are just not 100% sure, here's what it's gonna look like. So as you guys can see, my truck is in drive right now. You come over to the console. There could be some hair on it. There could be some drool. There could be some leftover pup cup on there. I don't know. But this little guy, this has a mechanism that's hitting that switch right now. So truck's in drive, we're in drive. But when you go to put it in park, right? But I'm still holding this, right? So since I'm holding it right now, see how the truck shows the orange light is not on park until you release it. So what happens, that switch ends up breaking over time like it doesn't spring back. And when you let go of that, it's let, you know, right now I'm let go, it's lit up orange. When it's broken and you let go and you don't get your orange light on the P for parking, you know you, your parking switch is jacked and your lights are gonna now stay on 24 seven until you figure out what the issue is. It's such a super easy fix that it's just more of the inconvenience of trying to figure out what, you know, the root of the problem is. But once you figure it out, it's, it's cheap. It's such a fast fix. I mean, there's literally, I can take it apart without any tools. The only thing I'm gonna need are wire strippers. But Wrigley, should we go hit up your favorite place in the world? Did you order a pup cup? What'd you get? Straight hooked you up with a donut bowl this time, dude. Okay, get over here. Get over here and do it. Oh, he's going, he's going to make a mess. Bottoms up, Wrigley. Ah! There went on the floor. Alright guys, so we already just went over what the issue is, what to be on the lookout for. Wrigley, say hi to the camera. No, no. Get over there, get over there. So Wrigley thought he was about to get out and go somewhere. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. 
Truck's a little dirty, I'm not even gonna lie. Right inside here, guys, is going to be your inner interior fuse panel. Pop that sucker out. We're gonna need some light for you guys. Right here's your interior dash panel. I have no clue where my fuse puller went. I wanna say the fuse, I believe it's this number 10 right there that you're gonna wanna pull out. I don't have the diagram handy, but that's the fuse right there. It should be that one, number 10. And that's the one that's gonna kill off the power to the interior. In the event that your switch does go bad, you're just gonna have to pull that fuse every time just to make sure that your battery's not getting drained. It's kind of a pain, but it's what you gotta do to limp it by unless you just find one nearby at, you know, AutoZone, Advance, something like that. They carry that dormant switch, it's just you're gonna pay a lot more, but it's the convenience factor. All right guys, so that's the fuse. My truck is filthy. Wrigley was trying to jump out. You don't, hey, you don't do, you don't do that. You don't do that. Hey, do you wanna drive? Okay, he's driving. Think I'm in love. Too often. I can play these games. Think I'm switching up the office. See me in LA. I be moving cautious. I can feel no pain. Rolling up. I'm so exhausted. I'll be so exhausted. Whoa. So I'm going to show you guys what to do to replace this bad boy. So first thing you're going to want to do is this, this got hairier just from Wrigley being in here. But basically this whole mechanism is going to pop up, right? So grab one side. Usually I just two hand it, pull it both up at the same time, but I'm holding the camera. So one side, one side. I think I've just popped it so many times now, it's probably a little easier than what it was factory. But what you'll do is you'll pull it up. Now, to get it all the way up, what you can actually do is click this in and pull it up. But since I don't need to actually remove this, I'm just gonna leave it. So, let's get down to the juice. So as you can see, these are the crimps that it came with. So I've already, you know, this is from me tying into it, but there's a red, blue, black wire. Red, blue, black wire. So that switch, I'm trying to see if I can even see it with you guys. It's this right here. You can see the wires right up in there. But all it does is it just pushes in place, and there's two plastic clips that hold it in. I did break one of them, but it still holds in just fine. And I don't know if you can see it. It still holds in just fine, but... Just know that if you break these, it could put you in a situation, but luckily mine holds in place just fine. When you hit the button that I was talking about up here on the shifter, so when you hit that button, you'll see the metal piece move down, right? So when it moves down, it releases that little switch. So when you release off the actual shifter, it pushes that switch up, therefore saying the truck is in park. What happens is this switch ends up breaking and it's not actually coming back out. So when you push it, it's not actually thinking, hey, this metal piece pushed the switch up, which is telling the truck it's in park. So that little stupid piece can ruin your day, possibly even your week. That's it. Simple as that. Once you pop it out, it does take, it's just like I said, I did break one of the tabs, but luckily it still holds in place, because I think if you break the tabs, then you're looking at replacing the whole shifter console. Don't quote me on that, but I still wouldn't do it. I'd still try to figure out a way to maybe epoxy this in or something, because I, it's expensive probably to swap out this whole system. There you have it. I try not to do that anymore. Sometimes I, you know, you're bored and you're just kind of doing that. Don't do that. So that's your fix. So literally all you have to do is take this old one out, Clip the three wires, literally match up the red, blue, black. Just get it out of the way. I just have mine, as you can see, just right here. It's no problems. When you're trying to get this in and it's sticking at this particular spot, push your button, goes past. So that's all I got for you guys today. A little tech tip on the parking switch and the issues that you could have 
if that's what your truck is doing. I'll drop a couple links below for the eBay ad. The eBay ad's gonna be a little cheaper for that switch, but if you get it through AutoZone like I did, you're gonna pay a little more with a two year warranty and you're gonna have the convenience of possibly picking it up this same day. So you don't have to wait and continue on for two, three, four, five days pulling out your interior dash fuse every time you park or go somewhere, which gets super annoying. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps me and Wrigley out. If you guys are still here, I appreciate you for watching the whole video. If you got any questions or anything like that, hit me up in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Me and Wrigley are... Wrigley is, you know, putting in his time and effort, sitting in the truck, being bored out of his mind, doing these videos with me, and we will make sure to keep bringing you guys some good content. But on that note, we got to go. Peace.